So the question is that you're probably wanting to ask, do you think these are better than the, the next percent twos? Well, I think the answer so far is no. Do you think they're better value for money? Well, the fact that they're basically almost half the price, then probably yes. Do you think they are any good for long distance, easy runs? Definitely not. I felt like lot will come to the next percent twos. Do you think they're a good marathon shoe? No, I think the next percent two are far better. Just felt so much easier. Do you think these are good if you're a really good runner? I think probably, I think perhaps the better runner you are, the maybe the better they are. Just feel like it's a little bit slappy when you're uh, going at a slower pace, relatively. But uh, yeah, not bad, but uh, I think the hype is perhaps more than the actual reality. And uh, I suspect if you've got an extra percent two or an extra percent and you're doing well in them, then keep with it. Because I think this is, uh, yeah, no, it's an interesting shoe, but there's nothing really, I would say so far, that's like this is the, the next best thing. Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Welcome to a place called Salem in West Sussex. Now I normally come here to look at old railways. There's an old railway station just up the road, but more importantly today, if you see on that uh, post box there, I've got the Street Flies and also the Next Percent 2. So time for a shoe off. Street Flies only just arrived this morning and then incredibly light, 216 grams at a UK 13 compared to about 270 on X percent two and X percent one is about 250 in my size so certainly one of the lightest shoes that I've got I think only my spikes are possibly lighter so what I thought I would do is unlike sort of some other YouTubers and just look at the shoe I'd actually take them out and see how they actually feel compared to the X percent twos because I think a lot of people want to know are these actually going to be better for 5 in 10k racing so the, what a better way to actually run in both shoes one after another and just sort of see how they feel. We're going to be looking at heart rate, RPE, or trying to run exactly the same speed in each of the two tests. So I'll run for a little bit at one speed in one shoe and then try and replicate that exact same speed and effort distributed across the whole distance in the other one, then look at heart rate and just give you my impressions of how they feel on foot. Having said that, let's have a very quick look at the shoe. So the upper is kind of a bit like sort of the Atom Fly kind of material in the Air Zoom Victory Spikes and a bit like the Alpha Fly. The tongue here is kind of quite similar to Next Percent 2. It's got a slight bit of padding there, but um, it's even more minimalist, I would say. If we look on the inside of the shoes, they kind of do look quite similar. You can kind of definitely tell there's definitely a, a vibe between the two shoes that are quite similar. Just a sort of a slightly more sort of minimalist feel in the street flies. Definitely slightly narrower. If I turn them over, you can kind of just sort of feel that it looks like one's a bit lower than the other one. Bit more rubber perhaps in the street fly than the than the next percent too so that's interesting to see kind of see how they feel on foot the laces are pretty minimalist as well but uh, i've got the other one on already and they're already looking like i can get a good lock down there they look quite a they look quite wide when i got them out of the box but when i actually put them on feet they actually feel quite narrow here's actually the street fly on my right foot and you can see i've got a bit of folding there in the upper for my quite narrow foot but uh, there's not really much extra material there and there's a bit of nice room there i'd say it's about the same sort of room as in the next percent too, haven't got quite that toe bumper there, so perhaps a bit less um, on the toes. The next percent one had an even worse toe bumper. But the street fly feels a bit narrower compared to the next percent. I feel like I'm slightly swimming a bit in the next percent twos, and you can see that I've got a huge amount of folding. So both a lot of folding on both ones, but probably not quite as much on this one. But I haven't actually run on this yet, so it may expand a bit. Now, as it's a prototype, we've got this little number on the side here, which I think is the same number in all of them. Heel counter is a bit more structured than that normally. It's quite firm back there, but you've got this sort of bit here, which kind of helps you to more put them on. But it's very flapping. It doesn't really seem to serve a great deal of purpose. Maybe just to hold you down. A bit of sponge at the back there to give you a bit of a lockdown. It's quite similar to the next percent twos. You can see that a very similar vibe there. That sort of wrap around sort of lock for the heel okay let's go out for a little warm up and then i'll get into these shoe offs so the course i'm going to do it runs from here that way it's so a sort of straight out and back with a little sort of roundabout at the end um it runs parallel to a polar field and parallel to old railways so it's fairly flat here the only sort of hilly bit is this first bit when it sort of goes down and up again but the rest of it is fairly flat so it's probably a good test it's quite sort of still today not a bit of wind in the air but quite cold a bit colder than it was yesterday but still enough of just where our arm warmers and i've got the fod singlet underneath so hopefully you don't want to get too cold right let's go on with some so it wouldn't be a tin gross video with a bit of old railway in it action here i'm standing on an old bridge we used to go across the track but the track bed's kind of disintegrated both sides with the polo pitch is kind of around there if you can see that so it'd be great in the summer to do sort of grass intervals 
So I've done a mile sort of easy pace of just sort of over eight minute miling. Perhaps not the best shoe for that. They do feel nice and light, but not really sort of much structure to them. So you don't feel like you're getting too much support. And I don't think it would really be a shoe that I would really want to take out for a long, easy run. In that sense, perhaps the Takumi Sen was actually better for that. Just a bit more structure to them, I think. But um, yeah, I think, I think it's definitely a shoe that feels like it wants to go faster. And perhaps just a quite sort of flat feeling at that speed quite sort of slappy almost um, which is um, interesting and you kind of almost feel like oh where's the plate in this um, yeah soft but not that soft because there's not that much stack so yeah initial impressions uh, interesting I think just in the shoe that I actually want to get going but um, I'll go back to now to the car this is about a mile warm up here back to the car and I'm getting to the first interval but I think I'll try and do about seven minute mile pace just to see how that feels that's sort of like a marathon pace ish or like a 5k pace if you were doing about 22 minutes 23 minutes something like that so a good standard but not sort of like you know eyeballs out Last weekend I did six minute miling in the 10k and obviously it's uh, not a race day today, I'm not rested up for this. It's actually a bit more wind in the end I think, so one way is going to be harder into it and then the way should be nice and easy coming back, so that will be interesting as well. Right, I'll get my warm up done and we'll set off in the first interval. Okay, my FOD runner top on and uh, ready to go. So I'm going to try for about seven minute miles on this one, it's about two and a bit miles and uh, then we'll drop into the next percent and see how we go. And off we go. Right, so it'd be a nice sort of comfortable sort of cruising speed for me at the moment. It's going to be a bit harder on the way out because the wind's sort of into my face, but it's a fairly flat course, this one. And uh, this pace shouldn't be too difficult. Got a bit of a quad sort of soreness, so I'm going to nurse this one a bit. So bear with me if I don't do this one at breakneck speed, but uh, I don't want to break me as well. Right, we'll pull back later. So halfway in the street flight, I'm now going to attempt a bit of quick cornering. Let's get around this bend. So how are they so far? Well, not that wonderful I would have to say. Quite a lot of ground fill with them. I'm uh, actually struggling to do the seven minute mile pace that I said. So, certainly no magic shoe at this pace. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're okay. I don't feel that they're as light as they actually are on the scales. I think because they do feel a bit slappy, I can feel my toes a bit in them. And yeah, maybe it's a shoe that just wants to go faster more up on your toes. Perhaps at this speed I'm not going up on my toes. Anyway, I've had a, I have had a headwind on the way out, so that's not going to help. But uh, we're now turning back towards Salem and uh, see if we can dodge this pace more towards seven at our pace. Let's see where we go. Right, see you later. Okay, you're undone in the street fly. That's 2.75 miles. Actually, a bit further than I thought it was, actually, in the end. It's definitely easier coming back because the wind was uh, okay. So, I did actually average in the end pretty much bang on seven minute mile pace. So, that was good. I think I was halfway around though. They do feel a bit slappy. I do feel, I feel kind of feel like I feel the ground quite a lot. And all in all, so far, perhaps £135 is about what they're worth compared to the. 200 plus of the next of saying and 270 alpha fly so maybe it was a case of pay pays your money and takes your choice didn't really feel like it was getting a great deal of benefit at that pace and if anything i think that was harder so i'll do that same pace now the next percent twos it is more of a marathon effort then i'll see if i can draw up a bit of a faster one and uh, see if I, both, both like if I can drive up a bit of a faster one in me and in the shoes can as well i think it's gonna be more than me than the shoes but um Certainly for those asking, this, is this the shoe to take out for your long study runs? Uh, then absolutely not. <laughs> I think I'd be about the worst shoe for that. I just know not enough support, I don't think. And uh, I think you really would be better off in a shoe, more like the speed, just a bit more structure to it. And uh, just feel it feels like more comfortable for that sort of run. Not uncomfortable, I have to say, but you just don't fully get any benefit. But uh, let's get the next percent twos and just confirm how they feel in comparison. 
Okay, next we've sent twos on. Instantly they feel like a lot more cushioned. Uh, will they actually help? I mean, this next we've sent two should win at seven minute mile pace for me, which is just about my marathon effort, if you excuse the fact that this is uh, not exactly a tapered race day. But I want to see how they were at that speed just to get a feel for uh, some of the people that questions are asking. Obviously, if everyone's 5k pace is different. So that wasn't uh, too hard. Well, they felt like it was not easy, should we say. Felt like it should be easier than that actually made it. Right, let's get on with this next one then. Uh, 2.75 miles, it was about just over 19 minutes. So we want to keep this pace exactly the same, which means I need to run slightly slower going out in terms of paces because of the wind. Let this car go by. It also come out to the middle of the countryside thinking there'd be no traffic. Right, not time for a few more runs yet. I never have enough time to do these runs. We'll run out of light. I need to do them in the summer, really. But they, should, they should only issue shoes in the summer, shouldn't they? So then I have all day to do it. Right, let's get on with this then. So I got that one on Racer Activity and that one's on Virtual Pacer. So we should be good to go between the two of us. Okay, right, let's get on this then. Bleep and bleep. Right. Oh yeah, instantly I kind of feel like I've got more help underfoot. It's sort of help, but just sort of like more cushioning, which uh, maybe this pace is what you need. Maybe that's the whole idea. Maybe I need to be running five minute flat out sprints and then it will make a difference. But yeah, anyway, we'll report back later. Okay, halfway around the next percent. I have to say, I feel like I'm jogging in comparison to the street flights. It's kind of weird. I don't know if I'm just sort of more into this or better warmed up or, or what. It just feels like I'm sort of having to hold back just to keep up with the pace I was doing there on the street flights. But uh, I say we're not actually doing the pace that the street flights designed for, but you got to think for me as a just under sub three marathon runner these days, well, on, on a good day, <laughs> that uh, that should be a good test. I mean, my heart rate was barely 120, I think. How far am I now? Yeah, one second up, so I'm keeping to this pace very well. Right, I just sort of feel that this Sprint 2 has so much more cushioning, especially on the toes for me. So if you saw my run shield through the bar video, that's where I seem to sort of feel the road a bit. A bit disconcerting when a new shoe you can kind of feel your toes already, so that's a bit weird. Anyway, we need to work on the way back a bit more, so I'll touch out at the end. Okay, next we sent two run down. I deliberately did that exactly the same time, so the fact that there may have been a second or two difference was by the by because I was literally to kind of control the whole effort because it was slightly slower going out, slightly easier coming back with the wind. And I looked at my heart rate and it's actually gone down one B average in the next percent twos. And it felt like it was just easier at that pace. But in a way you can't expect that because that is marathon pace and that's a marathon shoe versus a fancy racing flat. So what we're gonna do now, if the body allows, is to do about a half mile of that way, have a short rest and a half mile back. I've got the street flies back on again somewhat faster to actually more represent to the sort of uh, 10k effort see if i can get somewhere near sort of six minute pace maybe slightly easier on the way back i don't want to kill myself i've got this quad strain but um just want to see how it responds at the speeds that it's designed for for me i think it's important to stress me because 5k pace for someone who's an elite athlete maybe sort of sub 4 30 minute miling for me it's just under six minute miles i mean i averaged just over six minute miling in the 10k uh, last Sunday, and I was pleased with that. So maybe in a 5k, I could get down to about 550 at the moment, but it's all there or thereabouts, isn't it? Um, you know, for those guys, that would be a, a jog, and, and even for elite women, much different as well. So plenty of women can run certainly quicker than uh, six minute miling for sure. So no, nothing special about me, and not even sub elite. Well, maybe I was sub elite back in the time, but uh, these days are just a 55 year old guy who likes to test shoes and run a bit, and hopefully keep going. Right, let's see if I can get this going then. I don't want to kill myself doing this, but uh, just get into a nice stride and see how I feel. Okay, so you're up to the entrance to the polo field here. About 0.55 of a mile, averaging 606. So certainly that felt like a good effort into a slight wind as well. And maybe slightly uphill, if, uh, truth be told. Or maybe that's an excuse. I feel slightly better at that uh, effort. I still feel a bit slappy. I still feel like it's a bit too much sort of 
toe feel for me compared to the next percent. Maybe just sort of get used to the fact that I like a bit under my toes because that's where I kind of like toe off and maybe put the most pressure in the shoes. So yeah, maybe there's an element that the shoes need to suit you. I certainly don't think that these are anything uh, amazing so far. Uh, I mean, I wasn't really just try trying to uh, gauge there. I felt just trying to sort of run sort of hard and uh, see how they feel. Okay, I've had about three minutes rest after that three minute interval. So I'm gonna run back. This sort of feels just walking down the road actually is easier. I'm starting a slightly downhill bit here and the wind's behind, wherever there is. So I thought it would be getting a bit cold now. So I definitely like the arm warm. It's these sub two um, breaking arm warms. I think the arm warms would be a revelation for me. I've been wearing them almost every run for about the last month. And uh, I don't know, I didn't think of it soon. It's so much more comfortable just wearing a normal top with arm warmers. I feel more aero. And uh, as long as it doesn't rain, that's only slag. They do feel like sort of a bit of a compressive feeling as well. So yeah, interesting. Certainly would recommend them. Recommend them even more when they're half price than like yourself. I think they've gone up to £37 again now, which is uh, bordering on the expensive. But uh, yeah, for £20 also, what I've got them for, definitely more, far more, um, far more good. Right, better go on with this last interval then. See if I've got time for a couple of next percent twos or ones to compare. Okay, the run back done in the street flight was slightly easier that way, seven seconds quicker, I think. I got that 5.49 pace. So yeah, hopefully that's a good uh, 5K, 10K effort. I'm gonna repeat them now in the next percent twos. Uh, just enough light, light to get it done. It's quite light when I get to the other end, so uh, should be good. Just a bit more tree cover here where I park the car. Okay, well, this has been an interesting test. I think the verdict so far is, yeah, don't rush out and uh, worry that you haven't got the street fly. I think if you've got next percent twos, I think they're still better for any distance for me. Maybe if you're a four minute miler or can run, want to run a sub four mile. But yeah, just sort of feel like um, that low to the ground feeling, the extra stack in the next percent. Maybe the carbon plate does help because it's more stack. It just feels like it's more bouncy, more sort of responsive, more cushioned and maybe just more faster i don't know but we'll see after these intervals because that's a bit the acid test and uh, we'll get in and look at the spreadsheet because it's probably a bit dark so i'll get back from these two and uh, we'll see what we can make out from the stats right thanks for coming along and see you a bit later so one rep done in the next percent twos at 5k 10k pace and i was fractionally faster i just felt like i was trying to run the same effort but yeah again i kind of feel more comfortable in these have a few minutes rest and we'll run back and that'll be it. Right, see you inside. All right, so we're back indoors and here's the spreadsheet. I've knocked this up quite quickly to this time because this is the evening of the Sunday that I did these runs. So just a reminder of what I did here. I did in the street fly first 2.75 miles. There's a largely flat out and back along parallel to the polo field and the old railway. That's why I kind of chose it because like, like old railways and it's sort of nice and flat. And I was trying to do this at seven minute mile pace. I had my virtual partner on one watch on the way out and I realized it was a bit harder going out. So I let it drift a bit knowing that it would be easy coming back. And I did 1920 with an average heart rate of 126 and max 139. Now I think the max actually got quite high when I was talking to the camera at the halfway because there's a slightly, slightly little rise. And the fact I was talking to you that put the heart rate up. So I've also put some other stuff in here, which is the basically the first half and the return half minus the little bit where I did the turnaround just to see the comparisons. And you can see that these to the same distance, but noticeably quick on the way back. 8.26 out, but 7.58 back. And the heart rate was a bit higher on the way back, obviously with the heart rate drift. Now with the second one, next percent twos, Try to match that exactly, and I think I did a very good job there actually. I was using race and activity and was very careful not to get that out of sync because sometimes I get a bit carried away and, and uh, ruins the test a bit. So, as you can see here, the first half I got identical at 826, and uh, the second half just a couple of seconds out. And then these last two bits here were the, uh, the later sort of 5k, 10k segments. I just put them in for good measure, and uh, you can see there interestingly that. In the next percent two actually the heart rate actually went down one which is quite rare because in the second interval after basically best part of a 5k interval you'd expect that average to have crept up to about 127 128 just on heart rate drift and actually went down and the maximum also went up on that term when i was talking i tried to replicate the same talking so having the same conditions but it didn't go up as much and i did when i looked did look down as i said in the video i did see like 120 on my garmin and i thought oh this 
I was having to feel like I was having to hold back. It just seemed to be much more efficient at that speed. And I wasn't getting that sort of ground feel that I was getting in the street fly. It just felt, it just felt like a completely better experience altogether. Not like the street fly was bad, but it just felt like it was the inappropriate shoe for that sort of pace. And, you know, not being big headed, but that's seven minute mile pace is a good 5k pace for the majority of runners, I would say. So, you know, are we saying that somebody who's a 22 minute, 22, three minute runner isn't going to benefit from the street fly? Well, yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Hard to say. So to actually give it a proper test and then I was actually warmed up and I thought my quad was just about OK. And then I actually did basically uh, sort of a, a take on the classic six by three minute 5k session but only did uh, four reps, two in each one. So I did basically 0.55 a mile out on the course stopping where the polo field entrance was and that uh, uh, basically I sort of tried to do it what I thought was like about race pace that like I was doing similar uh, last week at Beachley. And it was a bit harder on the way out because it was into slight headwind. It was about, well, we've got the wind here, 8.3 miles per hour, it says, according to the Strava stats. And it was a southwesterly, and I was basically going that way. So it was a, whatever wind there was, was, it was a headwind. And it was quite cold, 60 degrees. So definitely needed the arm warmers. Not quite cold enough to need gloves and you know, a bit of uh, upper elbow exposed with the singlet. But um, yeah, I mean, not exactly a warm day. And there I did 606 pace. So, yeah, bang on my sort of 5k, 10k effort. And the average heart rate there, as you might expect, being faster pace was 134. And obviously, being faster, the cadence went up. And uh, similarly, as you might expect, the ground contact time went down. And the VO uh, were well, a bit mixed there. That one was um, the lowest of the lot, but they seem to, the VO seems to be similar. Can't read really much into too much of that. Seemed to got a better ground contact time balance when I actually got faster. Um, these seemed a bit lopsided there, but um, seems to rectify myself when I was going a bit faster. So I went back after that little talk to the camera. I had about five minutes rest there, and uh, a bit easier going back because the wind was slightly behind. Uh, seven seconds faster, more or less the same heart rate, uh, only one beat difference in average, same max. So you can see that was definitely easier. Then I had uh, five minutes while I changed shoes, very t quick talk to the camera, and back out again in the next percent two. And uh, I didn't really try to actually match that effort. I just sort of did that on feel and see how it came out. And it came out fractionally faster. Average heart rate there was slightly higher, maximum exactly the same. Now I'd probably argue you know, that um, when you start doing these reps, the heart rate drift is really is gonna kick in. So the fact that I was able to keep that maximum the same and run faster, uh, it's quite a testament to the fact that I thought the next percent two was probably a, a better shoe for me. Not that this the street fly was bad, but you I mean you're expecting in its sort of natural habitat of a 5k, 10k effort, it's really going to shine. And well, I can't really say that it did. I mean, at best, it's as, as good, but I would say, given the fact that I was going to get a bit tired by then, um, that was definitely um, win to the next percent two, I'd say. And similarly, on the way back, um, again, just actually managed the same average heart rate coming back that I did out and just one beat difference in max so I would say again that's pretty much the same sort of effort and I was a bit faster so again you kind of you would say well yeah there's definitely no advantage to the street fly there and you would probably argue that the next percent two was better I think the stats say that and just felt like easier on foot to be honest so yeah that's kind of my takeaway from this is that the street fly is not bad but it's a shoe that's costing 135 pounds compared to the next percent which is depending on which version you get is at least 200 pounds and then the alpha fly at 270 so uh, the next percent one was well about 240 wasn't it so considerably more expensive and uh, people did think well why is that street fly so cheap and i think well um, yeah, certainly, certainly felt they could have charged a lot more by the, how quickly they sold out uh, on Friday. But in terms of actual performance, yeah, it's a nice shoe. But I think you're getting the value for money of £135. So maybe that's an element of, of what it is. And maybe that is sort of more marketed as the the more of the budget racer. When they say it's a 5K, 10K, maybe it's just less tech in it. And uh, the fact that it's so much lighter i didn't really sort of feel the lightness i was kind of expecting that would really fly maybe if you were sort of doing a uphill interval that's short you would really notice that less weight but i just felt that i was feeling that ground more and it just sort of felt like it was 
harder work um and it did feel it did feel a bit like a racing flat but not quite the sort of the, the narrow takumi sen 8 one i mean this is narrow but not as narrow on foot as the takumi sen 8 so i think street fly as i think many nike shoes would probably fit a, a broader range of feet than some of the adidas shoes are which i think are the the narrowest out there which is probably why i like them and uh look at this segments here i actually made a segment on the out and back sections just to see if i could claim it. i think i got the one back and not a second on the way out so i'll have to have a go another go at that another time it's quite uh, uh remote around here which kind of why i liked it very very few traffic the, the road itself is barely, barely wide enough for one car so when a car came behind me it was trying to get past me unfortunately one was coming the other way and it was a good two minutes before the two cars had negotiated each other and he wanted to get past me. So that was quite nice. He kind of felt like the runner was actually winning there. It was just sort of uh, such a narrow road. And uh, you know, you doing about sort of uh, nine, ten miles an hour was the was the fastest way. Anyway, so I hope you appreciated this sort of um, initial look, come detailed look at the Street Fly versus the next percent two. I'll be sure to do some more testing on the Street Fly. I've got some other ones to look at. Definitely want to do one with the Kimi Sen 8, some of the Adidas shoes. Maybe have a, a shoe off with more in it. The Primex, I think, has been a popular request. A completely different chalk and cheese uh, shoe there. But yeah, my verdict is uh, not a bad shoe, but if you didn't get it, then uh, I wouldn't be too concerned. 60 and next percent or next percent two, and I think you'll uh, go faster with, le with less effort. And uh, yeah. Um, but uh, if you haven't got any of the shoes and you want to get a racing shoe, which is at a reasonable price when they restock, which I'm sure they will shortly, then definitely one to look out for. But don't expect miracles as with any shoe. It's largely down to your talent, dedication and training as ever. And uh, or in my case, age. So uh, still keen, but uh, unfortunately the shoes aren't making up for the lost time on the years. So my best um, 5K is 15.26 and best K 10K is... 32.17 and uh, that's the best part of a minute a mile quicker than I'm currently doing but anyway still keen and uh, keen to do these sort of uh, videos and shoe offs and stuff and uh, helps me to motivate to get out there so is this a shoe that you managed to get um, based on my findings is this one now you're still looking to get I think certainly given the price it's worth taking a punt on it because unlike the next percent and the alpha fly you're not having to sort of uh, break the bank as it were but on the other hand, um, I always think sometimes pay a bit more to get something better um, saves the, uh, what's the motto of uh, buy cheap, buy twice or something, isn't it? But uh, yeah, I mean, it has its uses, but um, if it's going to be better than the next percent too, then personally, in my opinion, based on this is no, but is it going to be close? Yes, probably. But um, if you want the best out there, then um, stick with the ones that are cost more, I'd say. Okay, so I hope you found this interesting. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. And bye.